Hey, Storm Nation fans. Hank Boomershine here along with Alex Hoskins bringing to you another segment in this 10-part series on the changes in the bowling industry and the changes uh, from the USBC and, and what, what's going to happen to your bowling balls and what's going to happen to you know, the future of the game. So in this, in this series, part three, we're going to talk about the limitations on drilled holes. So tell us a little bit about what we're going to look at here. Sure. So this will be a little bit of a long, uh, this is actually how the rule reads in the USBC rule book. Um, holes or indentations for gripping purposes shall not exceed five and shall be limited to one for each finger and one for the thumb, all for the same hand with no drilled holes exceeding one and nine sixteenths in diameter and four and a half inches deep. Now that's going to be kind of what we're focusing on, mm -hmm. mostly the four and a half inches deep. We right. can't really, we're limited on how wide we can make a hole because it has to fit our hand, right? Correct. But we can mess with the depths of holes a little bit to try and change the dynamics since we no longer have balance holes. Correct. Uh, last thing to note on here is that the player is required to use all of the gripping holes on every delivery with the same hand except when using a house ball. And so remember all the two-handers out there that uh, don't put their thumb in it, so this is the one that affects them the most is that now that whatever the, the if they use uh, two fingers, three, four, so you could get some that use a full finger. Some, and there's some two-handed players out there that use a, a thumb in the ball. Some don't. Um, all holes have to be used now. So we cannot have that uh, uh, non-use hole. Yep. So we're going to take a look here at the, I, again, I said the depth is pretty much what we're able to change. We can't really change the diameter of the hole because obviously it won't fit our hand very well. So let's look at how the depth affects the RG of the bowling ball here. Now, if you look at this graph at first, it might look a little bit confusing. We'll go by, or we'll go step by step through it to kind of give you an idea. So what this is, is it's a one inch hole and uh, they're at three different distances from the pin. So each color of line represents a different distance from the pin. The green line is straight through the pin at zero inches. Uh, the yellow line is at three and three eighths inches. So kind of halfway between the pin and the PSA. And then the red line is at six and three quarter inches. That would be directly through the PSA on the bowling ball. Now, as you follow these lines to the right, you're going to see that that's different depths in each quarter of an inch. So we start really shallow, obviously at zero, that would be undrilled. And then we go all the way to four and a quarter deep. So there's a couple of things that you're going to notice here. Uh, what do you see happening as, as these lines are kind of... Just like we talked about in the... In the first part and the second part of this series that we've delivered to you is that we look at that hole zero inches from the pin. So basically we're, we're punching a hole right through the pin. And if we notice in the first basically inch, inch and a quarter, we start to, the RG starts to change. And then as we get to about the two inch range, we notice that that RG raises dramatically. And then it, once again, if we look at that three and three eighths inch hole and it starts to move along, it takes much, it's a slower progression and it's less change in the RG value. And then we look at the ones at six and three quarters, once again, it actually decreases to a certain point, and as you get past this two and three quarter inch mark, it starts to go back up again. So we'll let Alex talk a little bit about that, what happens in, uh, in a future slide here. Yeah, and you kind of notice that through the first, you know, two, about two and an eighth inches, those lines are relatively flat regardless of where they are. Obviously with the zero inch uh, from the pin, it goes up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But once you get past two and an eighth, we're, we start seeing what we call the donut effect. Mm -hmm. So we mentioned in a previous video that eight and a half inches is the diameter of the bowling ball. So if we cut that in half, we're at about four and a quarter. So that would be dead in the center of the bowling ball. So if we cut that in half one more time, we're at two and an eighth inches. Okay. So once we go past two and an eighth inches, we're actually closer to the center of the bowling ball than we are the surface of the bowling ball. Another thing we mentioned in the previous videos is that the densest materials are in the center of the bowling ball. So the more that we take out of the center of the bowling ball, the quicker we're going to see that RG value go up. You can see once we get past that, regardless of where the hole is, the RG value goes up pretty significantly. Absolutely. because So we're basically taking more mass out closer to the center. So that means there's more mass closer to the shell or the density of the mass is getting closer. So we notice that the RG values go up even if that hole is six and three quarter inches from your axis. From the pin, sorry. Yep. Let's move on to uh, the depth effect on differential. Now you're going to notice same exact graph here. We did the same format. You'll also notice the lines are the same colors for the distances from mm -hmm. the pin. So we're keeping it consistent so you guys will be able to follow it. But look at the difference in graph shape for this. It doesn't look anything like the first one. So nope. we can see that total differential is affected a little bit differently. Green line being zero inches from the pin. 
we can see that that has a, a reduction in total differential. Makes sense with what we've seen uh, from the first couple of parts in our video series. If we jump to the red line, you see that we have an increase in total mm -hmm. differential. Further away from the pin, more total differential. If we get right in between at that 3 and 3 eighths distance, we can see that it's pretty much flat. There's not really much of a change because we're right in the middle of the x and the y axis. So once again, we, told, we talked about that in a couple of these other series, that, these videos that we've done. And notice that once again, when we get to that about two and three quarter inches deep, notice that they all level out. Nothing really changes from that point. So once you get past a certain point in a bowling ball, once you get past that slug depth, if you keep drilling any deeper, you're not really changing the differential. All you're doing is raising the RG. And so I know there's a school of thought out there that if we drill a hole deeper than the thumb hole that we can increase differential. Actually, it's, it doesn't happen. It does, all it does is raise the RG. So a double thumb or drilling a thumb hole deeper than a, in, a, in, in through the thumb hole really is not going to affect differential. All it's going to do is raise the RG, which could possibly create a little more length down the lane. Uh, before it starts to come off of its skid phase, the skid phase. But uh, as far as total differential, we actually, it doesn't change. Yeah, and if there's enough friction downline, it definitely could create more ball motion left to right. But we got to remember that really good ball motion is produced front to back. Correct. So it's really important to be looking at the lane the right way and get a good idea of what the ball's doing as it's transitioning front to back. So we kind of hinted to this a little bit, um, but here's a real world example that we did with uh, drilling below the slug here. So what we did is we had a physics and uh, we swung the ball undrilled. We've got our undrilled numbers there on the top row. And then what we did is we drilled the thumb, I think it was a 31, 30 second thumb, mm -hmm. uh, one inch deep. Obviously you wouldn't be able to use that unless you only went to Half your first thumber. knuckle. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and then two inches, three inches, and all the way up to four inches. So let's take a look at what's happening with both RG and differential as, these, as the thumb hole gets deeper. So we go from one to two, we can see that the RG is going down, diff is going up. That makes sense. One thing I didn't mention is that we drilled this to where the thumb hole was perfectly six and three quarter inches from the pin. So this is gonna put it in the best position possible. So every other scenario is gonna get worse than this. Correct. So at three inches deep, you're gonna notice we went past that two and one eighth inch distance. RG values are starting to go up now. Mm -hmm. You can see total differential still going up, uh, but now look at what happens when we get from three to four. You can see RG values going up the most that it ever has, and look at that total differential. Differential, it's the neither's same. changed, and we saw that with that last slide where we talk, talked about that effect on differential, is that it's not gonna change past that, that depth, but we, did, we do notice that the RG value is gonna start climbing. And the bigger that thumb hole is, or the bigger that hole is, the more the RG climbs. So once again, the ball wants to go farther down the lane, or wants to stay on its skid, skid path a little bit longer before it starts to, to change direction. And if you're wondering why it doesn't, you would think, we, we, you know, we almost sound like we're contradicting ourselves a little bit by saying the deeper the hole, the more effect. It's the more effect on RG, but the way that differentials calculated with it being the difference in RG values between the X and the Y, once you get to a certain depth, even though you're at the Y at the surface, you're so close to the center of the bowling ball that the X is affected the same way as well. Absolutely. So you're not going to see as much of a difference once you get super deep with those I ones. I think we call that the donut effect, don't we? Yeah. All right, quick summary here of everything that we talked about today. So drilling a hole deeper than two and an eighth inches deep is going to result in significant increases in the RG of the bowling ball. Donut effect, as we talked about, closer to the center compared to the surface of the bowling ball. Yeah, and as we get uh, past that two and three quarter inches deep, uh, we notice the differential didn't change much. Uh, it didn't change at all, but we do notice that the RG values go up. So take that into consideration when, you're, when you do have that thought of trying to drill a hole deeper or through the thumb hole to, to make a change. Only thing you're gonna change in that, at that point is you're gonna change the RG of the bowling ball, not the differential. Yes. And uh, that kind of segues into this next point here. Uh, drilling below the slug is going to cause the ball to transition slower and be more angular off the end of the pattern if there's enough friction. So it's all dependent on friction here. And that's where you could see a little bit more left to right ball motion if you're on a pattern that's short enough or if there's enough friction down lane for that RG to kind of make the ball tumble a little bit more and change direction harder off of the spot. Yeah, but it could have an adverse effect as well, too, that when you do do this and you think you're going to create more motion, you could actually delay the ball in creating it in that transition. So it, it actually, um, those patterns could be very much a detriment versus, yeah. 
And lastly here, larger hole sizes at shallower depths are going to be the way to dynamically increase the bowling ball. Now in the thumb, we don't really have a ton of options of going shallower because our thumb is obviously a certain length and we can't go any less than that. Um, but in the fingers, this is going to be extremely important. Uh, the shallower that we can get those fingers, the more total differential that we're going to preserve in the bowling ball. Yeah, and we'll deliver some more information on that down the road. But yeah, take into consideration those two-handed players that cannot get that thumb hole back in to a bowling ball that will lower the RG uh, back to closer to what the specs were. Because the minute you put the fingers into a bowling ball, uh, you raise the RG because a lot of times the finger holes end up somewhere around that pin, so within a close distance of the x-axis. So the RG values can raise dramatically, which also decreases differential in many spots. And then when that two-handed player is allowed to put that hole back in, which is you know thumb hole slash balance hole, the RG goes va value goes back down, the differentials come back up. Um, so now that uh, we'll just give you a quick here is to say is that when you're starting to consider that, consider drilling the, the finger holes as shallow as possible, it's comfortable for the, for, for the player, and that will maintain the integrity of that bowling ball a lot more. All right, that pretty much does it for this was part three. Uh, next week, we'll move on to part four, which is one of the uh, most exciting things that people like to talk about, static weights in symmetricals. So we'll deliver some good information to you guys on that. Do you have anything else you want to talk about today? Hey, Storm Nation, thanks again for tuning in. Continue to uh, follow us on, through our YouTube channel, uh, all of our social platforms between Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Snapchat, all those things, and uh, through stormbowling.com. Uh, thanks again, and bowl up a storm.